the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody. Guess what? The Fruits of the Spirit series, this is the last one. It's called Temperance which is self-control. And you know, I'm excited about this one and I may go back and do gentleness. I kind of cut gentleness real short. So I want to go back and, 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 I, and I got a good one for that too. <laughs> I think you'll like it. Um, but for this one, I want to close out with the, the temperance, the fruits of the spirit are temperance. And, and it's so important because temperance means self-control. And one of the things is that we as believers, we as human beings, self-control is the most critical piece in our life. Many of us have lost it, accidents have occurred uh, because of the lack of self-control. Uh, and and, and I, said, I said it before, a lot of cases we don't want to, nobody wants to deal with people that don't have self-control. Because we dealt with love people that have lack of self-control. And I'm pretty sure most of the ladies understand the importance of having someone that can stay in control of themselves, right? Um, go on a date, let's do the date, let's do the things right, and let's stay on, on the control. Self-control is critical as a Christian. And people look at you when you operate out of control. I talked about many times before as, as far as in a, in, a, in sports and boxing, you know, I talk, remember old Muhammad Ali, for some of you, uh, but any boxer, you'll see that when that person can get in your head and cause you to, to, to lose control and come out of your game plan, that's when they can try to defeat you. And when you stay in control, you, you, you make sure that you make the right move, look, duck the right way. Uh, same thing as sports, basketball. You know, you don't shoot a basketball uh, out of control. So where's it going to go? It can go into the benches, uh, the bleachers, if you call it. Uh, it can go over the basket. It can go anywhere. But it's not going to go into the basket itself when it's an out of control shot. It's only when that shot, the person is focused in, 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 in control of the circumstances and that defense was the person they will come that defense in order to make that perfect shot. And that's all perfect defense, right? Is to get you off focus, off center. So one of the things that's so important in this particular series, this segment here of the fruits of the spirit in dealing with temperance is that if we can keep our act together in life, and that's the challenge, and that's why we need the Holy Spirit, we need to be in control of every circumstance that we come in contact with. And I mean not to control the people around you, but to control yourself, your emotions. Come on now. We're not talking about trying to control people. Self-control is controlling your emotions, can keeping you under control to cause you to make decisions that's not reactive but responsive. That's one of the things we even done with the uh, Carol's prison ministry. We, talk, we told the difference between a person who responds and a person who reacts. A person who responds gets what they want. A person that reacts gets what they deserve. And that's not what we want. We want to always get what we want. Amen? And so we want to go into this. And let's go ahead and just read the scripture, you know, Galatians 5. It's the main one that we've been using, 5.22.23. And it says right here, but the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, which is faithfulness, meekness, temperance, which is self-control. Against such, there is no law. See, the man doesn't give you a ticket when you're driving within the speed limit, right? I know sometimes they made mistakes, but let's, let's, let's besides the point. The bottom line is 
it's very hard for people to put you in jail, uh, charge you anything when you stay under control. In other words, you don't let people play the mind game when you, you focus on that. So what I wanted to do was to, to get into the scriptures that really deals with the importance of having control. And, and what I want to do, man, I'm excited about this because I, I think you'll like these scriptures. We're going to talk about first, we'll go back to 2 Peter. That's what we read before, dealing with self-control. And it, it, it addressed temperance. But then I want to get into, I think most of you love this. And Jesus said it is in Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower. You'll love it. But let's first go ahead into what Peter was talking about. In fact, there's a calling, right? So let's go here and go back to the uh, scriptures. If we're going to deal with uh, temperance, starting with Peter. Second Peter, starting verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have attained like precious faith. Talk about us now with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, one of the things that is, is important as we get forward, move forward, is the knowledge of God. That's what we study the Bible, so the knowledge of God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said in verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto all us all things that pertains unto life, come on now, and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now, I mean, that's critical in there to understand he has given us his divine power. And see, that's what I'm saying is when I even first started to study, it's, it's to talk about the fact is that Christians, you are not powerless. You have been given power. You need this power. You need this power to bear these fruit. You need this power to, to, to operate in this world. Amen? So what it says in 2 Peter 1, 4 says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Saying we have precious promises that by these you might be partaker of the divine nature. Heaven escaped the corruption, come on now, that is in the world, and look what is through, through lust. Most of us sit there and think about lust, we think about father the opposite sex, but a lot of cases we lust for different things, money, greed, power, is this the desire to have of covenant somebody else's stuff. We want more and more, and it's less. And besides this, given all diligence, add your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance or self control, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor what? Unfruitful. That's why we tell my head, you check your fruit today, right? God wants us to be fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his own sin. We've been purged from our own sins. That's critical to understand. The past is behind. God has given us, forgiven us, amen? Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail if you do these things. Now, when I looked at that, I mean, you, you see the importance of the fact is that God has purged our old sins. 
many of us have already written ourselves off because of our past transgressions. And we sit there because, you know what? People, as well as yourself, have, have just given up and said, I'm guilty and I should be punished. Well, you know what? The grace of God, the mercy of God comes in to let you know that God can forgive you. Now, most cases, we have a hard time forgiving one another. We have a hard time believing that God will forgive us if we can't forgive ourselves. Well, what I want to do, and this is the good news today, is God has forgiven you. God has forgiven me. And you ever know the situation where you want to say you're sorry, and you say you're sorry, and somebody don't want to forgive you. And to the degree, they don't believe you. But you know the difference between a person or people and God and even you is that God looks at your heart. If you are sincere in saying, Lord, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for what I did to somebody. They won't forgive me, but can you forgive me? Guess what? He forgives you. And the difference is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. But the also the fact is that he sees your heart. It's not to be, it's not to be see, you can't deceive God. If you you have not changed and you want to keep doing the same things over and over, over and over again, then it's it's vain to ask. But my point is for all of us who sincerely want to repent for the things we did wrong, or for the or let's say certain things that we did do wrong, God is faithful to forgive us. So he has purged us from our old sin. And now our job is to move from glory to glory to glory with the Holy Spirit to change our lives and those we come in contact with. And that's why he said, wherefore, rather, brothers, give diligence to make your call it an election sure. For if you do these things, you should never fail or fall. That's why he wants us to have self-control because it gives that ability to take the knowledge that comes into us, to take the patience that we have learned and, and endure with, to, to operate in kindness, and, and, and we'll be able to abound and be fruitful. See, the thing is, those who don't operate in these fruits of the Spirit, you know, and operate in the flesh become unfruitful in their living. God said, no, I want to make you fruitful. Not doing these things will make you unfruitful. Now, that's why I want to get to the, the parable in Mark about the sower. Because the, the things that keep us from being successful, keeping us from being fruitful, is when the enemy and those around working and serving for the enemy uh, try to get us off our game. That's why self-control is so important, to stay in the game, keep your head in the game. Life itself is a challenge, and you have to stay under control. You have to know that you're in a warfare. But you know what? You have a victory through the power of the Holy Spirit. God has given us power to deal with the enemy. And that's why you need to bear these groups. It's so important. And, and, and I hope you get this. This is critical. Let's go to the... Uh, the parable of the sword. I mean